So, hello everyone. Uh, nice of you to join us. I'm happy to see that there's so many people joined us and are like probably have an interest in backstage. Uh, so, uh, let me first introduce myself. I am Stefan. I'm the product manager for Backstage. Uh, I've been working in Spotify for a little over three years uh, on Backstage from the start almost um, and uh, I've been working on other related like developer experience things uh, trying to make our engineers lives better and more productive essentially uh, so today uh, we're gonna do like a kind of a webinar series I'm gonna share like you know some a short brief background about backstage and what we're trying to achieve um, then I'm gonna do like a a demo, maybe a 15 minute demo or something like that of our internal deployment. For those of you who have checked out our, like the open source version of Backstage, it's, uh, it's, it's somewhat hard to see exactly, you know, what it could be. So hopefully the demos, uh, or the demo will, you know, give you some inspiration of, and also see like, you know, what, what, what's ahead, what, what will come in the later stages of, of Backstage open source. Uh, so if you have questions on the way, uh, please post them in the, in the chat. And, and Alex, uh, who's also on the call, will help out to sort of field questions um, to me at the end, I think, uh, right? And uh, yeah, so with that, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Uh, and uh, so first of all, uh, like what is Backstage? So Backstage is, this is the new logo as well that you have seen, uh, hope, hopefully. Uh, so Backstage is our homegrown developer portal. It's essentially an app store or like a one front end for all your developer tools. Uh, Spotify used to have a huge problem of like all our tools and, and, and systems and, and all the like documentation, et cetera, being just spread out all across hundreds of systems, actually. Um, this was uh, actually starting to slow Spotify down. Uh, we, um, by looking at like how long it took for our engineers to get productive, that's one way of looking at like productivity. Um, we saw that as we were growing as a company and we were adding more and more infrastructure, infrastructure tools and more and more complexity into our software systems, uh, we were starting to slow down. And this meant that pretty much like as, as we grew, every additional engineer got less productive. Uh, it's not a good situation to be in if you're like a company like Spotify who's like growing quickly and, and uh, have ambitious plans. So uh, after going around and talking to a lot of our customers uh, in the different uh, in, in teams at Spotify, one thing that we were hearing clearly was that they were slowing down uh, because of a lot of the complexity or the context switching between jumping between different tools and not finding the right information to get the job done. So that's where we decided to create a single platform experience for all of our developer tools and infrastructure. So rather than having different infrastructure teams like building separate tools, uh, what we decided to do was to build, my team would take on to build a platform and in that platform we would integrate all the different tools that we had as what we call plugins so instead of building a separate product you build a plugin into backstage and what comes out on the other side is a more consistent experience for our engineers so right now we have over 60 different teams that have contributed at least one plugin to backstage and we have I think uh, over 120 different plugins built by those 60 teams. So Backstage internally, is it's kind of a huge project. Uh, and what we were seeing when we went out and demonstrating like Backstage and talking to other infrastructure organizations was that they were seeing similar problems. So they were also seeing fragmentation and, and all the complexity of like, you know, integrating open source software. So when we demoed Backstage, people were pretty, you know, amazed, to be honest, that like, oh shit, this is a nicer way to do this. Uh, and then we started thinking about, maybe this is not a Spotify specific problem. And 
is there a way for us to open source what we have so that we can start to create sort of a better better developer experience not only for spotify engineers but for for the broader sort of engineering landscape and this is what we're trying to achieve with backstage we think that there's like a missing like open source project that ties together various other open source and, and infrastructure products together in a more consistent experience so this is what we're hoping to do with backstage enough about that let's dive into the demo so before going with doing that you can the typical user of backstage today inside spotify is a is a team that is working on a piece of a spotify puzzle it's be a piece of the Spotify, you know, app or part of Spotify uh, service. So it could be teams like you know, search team that owns search across all of Spotify. It could another team could be owning our ad insertion stack, or you know, the um, Spotify for Kids, a part of that experience. All of different Spotify divided up into small small teams, and all of those teams use Backstage as their primary way to create and manage the software that they own, that build up, that make up to their parts of Spotify. So um, this is the starting point. Uh, this is the home page of, of, of Backstage. Uh, there's a lot of different things going on here, uh, but Spotify engineers use Backstage very differently. So the home page is where you have your, you know, you can customize some of your, like, you know, the entry point, if you will. You can put your favorites in here and recently visited. There's some news information. Uh, and there's some links to deeper parts of Backstage where you have your machine learning segments and you know, tech health, et cetera. Uh, and then we, we even have a, if you, for those of you who are Spotify like customers, uh, you maybe have seen playlists called Daily Mix that are generated for you. Uh, this is a sort of a gaming on that. Like there's a, where you get a daily mix of your, your playlist for technical documentation. Uh, I'm gonna show technical documentation a little bit later, but this is just you know, one of the customizable things that you can put on your home screen. Uh, but a typical like user journey for an engineer is that I want to go and I wanna create software. That's typically a starting point for a lot of, of things. And the way we do that inside Spotify is we, we have standardized the process for doing that through Backstage. So regardless of what I want to create, it's a service, a data pipeline, a website, a mobile feature, it's all done through the same process. So we have these, what we call templates that basically instantiate the project for you. So if I want to create a new backend service, for example, uh, I follow uh, one of those templates and, and this example, the template is, is marked as being golden path. This means that we in the platform organization at Spotify think you should follow this, this, uh, this template or this path. If you do that, we sort of guarantee that you're supported fully. And uh, if you jump, uh, end up in problems, we got you back. So if I choose one of those templates, oh, well, I have to log in with GHG. So that's another example. Spotify, uh, we use GitHub internally and Spotify backstage manages like your interactions with some of your interactions with GitHub as well. So coming back to this, um, if I wanted to create one of those Apollo services, as we call them, um, if I follow this template or this wizard, I pretty much get a running backend service that runs in production and that has all the like recommended practices built in. So I get CI uh, hooked in up, I get documentation in, uh, we use a docs like code approach where we have documentation close to the code. All that is set up for me, logging, I get Kubernetes deployment files, everything is sort of set up for me. So the only thing that I need to do is just to go to the, to the GitHub repository, pull down the code and start coding. All the infrastructure has been abstracted away and sort of removed from my, I don't really have to do anything about it. Uh, going back here again, so that was for a backend service. If I wanted to create you know, a data pipeline or a mobile feature, a website, or even technical documentation, all of these things are done in the same way. And these templates are like 
you know, they are collaboratively sourced, if you will. So even if it's, they are maintained typically by the infrastructure organization, uh, they are also open to contributions. So if a engineer at Spotify thinks we should use, you know, technology X instead of technology Y, um, there's a chance for them, or at least they have a process for, you know, sending a pull request to change this template and thus changing sort of the recommended practices. Okay, so if I, now that I've created a bunch of software that make up sort of the pieces in my products that I develop at Spotify, uh, the second category of use cases that you go through in Backstage is to sort of manage those software components. And what we have is a manage tab here. Uh, and what I get here is a lot of things, but if you start looking at the side here, you see that uh, basically a squad is an, a, a team at Spotify. And so this is the team page. And I get some overview of what the team owns and what they should care about from a backstage perspective. So apparently we should care about our cloud costs, we should look at our security incidents, et cetera, and, and uh, you know, cycle time for our, for our team. Um, and this is where sort of the strength of backstage starts to come in and the plugin architects to start to like show. So rather than being like a specific security, you know, website or security system that you have to go through or security needs to like hunt down people to, you know, take care of their issues. What they do instead of is that they build a plugin into backstage and that plugin like makes so that engineers don't have to go around finding this information. It's all integrated into backstage in one place. Uh, this overview page also shows me, you know, Ownership. Ownership is a super strong concept at Spotify. So the teams that that have this software, created the software, also owns the software, the full end-to-end -end life cycle. And if you're a back-end engineer in one of those teams, you're even on call for, for the services. So if they go down in the middle of the night, you're responsible for uh, for waking up and you know fixing the problem, getting it back online. So a lot of the things in Backstage are built around this concept of ownership and you owning your own software. So here we can see that we are owning in this team 29 different services, a couple of websites, data endpoints, which is basically pi data pipelines in Spotify terminology, uh, and some other things like GCP project, Google Cloud project, etc. Uh, we can even use we use Backstage as a primary way to communicate to our engineers as well. What I mean by that is that as we grow, grew as a company, it got increasingly hard to like communicate best practices, things that we in the platform organization wanted you to do, etc. So one of the clear examples of how we use Backstage is around managing and visualizing migrations and upgrades that people need to go to. So since you are in charge of your own software, you're also in charge of migrating from technology A to technology B during various times. For example, Python is getting, you know, Python 2 is getting deprecated uh, or end of life. And we want to want everyone with Python services to move to Python 3. Uh, so rather than sending out like a lot of emails to the rest of the R&D organization and just telling them, you know, their status, what we did is that we visualized the progress of this team inside Backstage. And this again is like a common pattern that we, we surface the right information focused on the engineering, uh, like an ownership in Backstage. And then we assume or we let engineers with that information make, you know, choices. And in this case, we even took it a bit longer or further where you can go, you can drill into, you know, a specific migration and look at, you know, how is, you know, the rest of Spotify doing? Yeah, we're at 51% and you can even go, you know, get some healthy gamification going, like, you know, looking at different teams and how far they have come in this process. That has been very, very, like, you know, helpful for us, both helping us in the infrastructure teams to drive, you know, adoption of certain technologies, but also making it much, much easier for our customers to, to know what is expected from them. All right, so going back to the ownership aspect here, um, 
I have a number of services. So if I drill in to all of these services, um, I get deeper in. So now I'm starting to look at like, what are all the different services that my team owns? And I get this service catalog, if you will, um, or software catalog with, with some additional information, such as is this component, is this in production? Do we have a pager duty set up? Are all the tests passing as they should, et cetera, et cetera. We even have a quality indicator uh, that we call test certification at Spotify, where you can see, you know, are we fulfilling te best practices when it comes to test testing? And again, coming back to this pattern that we use around like visualizing uh, information for engineers and, and asking them to make a decision. This is the way do we do that. We can visualize that this is not certified. And we can even use, you know, some indicators if, we, if this is a strong thing that we want them to do. Uh, all right. Next step. So let's say this is a number of the services that we have. Uh, let's drill deeper into one of these services. So in this case, we have a service called newspaper. I know that because I see it here. Uh, and this newsp uh, newspaper service is a like standard microservice, one out of a thousands thousands of microservices that runs in, in production at Spotify. And from this like overview page, I can get some overview information of who's the owner, like it happens to be me. Uh, I can see the technical owner, I can see that this is owned by this team. Uh, I can even, and this is like information that is available to everyone at Spotify. So if I now I found it through my ownership, but I could also imagine searching across the whole sort of ecosystem of, of whatever, websites, apps, services, documentation, and you can find, if I select, for example, let's say I wanna search for a service and the artist service, then there's a service called artist that is owned by a different team and I can find that because every, all the software is in one place, like in one software catalog all the different types uh, and this is also where we start to see like some other integrations for example technical documentation lives the way we do technical documentation at spotify is through as i said in the beginning a docs like code approach meaning that engineers write technical documentation in markdown files together with their code so if they want to change documentation they can do that simultaneously as changing you know the code in the same pull request which makes it more likely that documentation is kept up to date uh, which is a plus uh, and we can also view that documentation right here in in backstage so during ci process documentation is built into like a you know a nice looking documentation site and it's it's available in backstage at a predicted url uh, i can also go so this was for documentation for one of our software components. Um, I can even go into like the, we also have like a, a landing page for documentation at uh, uh, as whole. So if you wanna search across, not just for one component, but you wanna search across all technical documentation inside Spotify, uh, you can do that from, from backstage as well. Uh, and we have then added some additional, you know, uh, automation and also additional like use cases on top of documentation. So you can see like what are the most important documentation, you know, get some high level overview stuff, as well as what we call the golden paths, which are tutorials that we, that we ask, you know, everyone that is new to go through to create a backend service or a mobile feature or machine learning in this case. Uh, so every discipline at Spotify has what we call a golden path, uh, which takes you from following that tutorial takes you from A to B, like, you know, creating a new website or spinning up a new machine learning model, etc. Okay. Switching back to the services overview page. So the question is then, what is a plugin in this case? Uh, plugins are essentially all of these different tools that you see here on, on the left-hand side. And the trick that we have pulled off uh, is that rather than having one team that builds like the whole developer portal, we have been able to like unlock 
other teams within inside our platform or infrastructure organization to build the parts that they own. So for example, we have a team at Spotify that manages our CI infrastructure and you know the running of builds and, and, and all that. Uh, they are the experts in CI and take care of that. And they don't only maintain like the, you know the, the actual infrastructure behind the scenes, but they also build a UI in backstage. They build a plugin essentially. So this plugin, you know, everything you see here is a plugin that is owned by a team that is you know, responsible for our CI. And what we in the platform team and what Backstage provides to them is this canvas to draw on. And, and like reusable components such as this you know, data grid that they can easily just take their data, their API, and expose that information in Backstage. There's also a consistent like information architecture. Like, so every plugin has this support button. So if I want to report a bug on this, or if I want to find the official documentation or you know, get in touch with a team, it's all done the same. And if I switch to another plugin uh, owned by a different team, the, the, the experience is somewhat different because this is a different use case, but it's, it's similar enough that, that it's like, you know, familiar when you're switching between the different uh, things. So imagine this actually under the hood, this uses, uh, it's you know, running on, on uh, Kubernetes uh, or, and, and deployed using Spinnaker, but our engineers don't really have to know that because the only thing that they interface with is, is this UI in, in Backstage where they can go and you know, deploy and redeploy their services. And again, same consistent like, you know, way to get support and, and, and find out how to use this plugin. Another example is, you know, if I want to look at the API documentation for this you know, component or this backend service, it's all another plugin in Backstage. So our engineers don't have to become experts in the various tools. They, they can use Backstage to do pretty much all their infrastructure, uh, you know, use cases. So this was a service. Let's switch back to the manage. This, we can not only manage services, but we can also manage other types of software. Let's say workflows, which is like basically a data pipeline. This is what powers you know, our, some products like you know, Discover Weekly and stuff like that. Uh, so we, our team also owns a couple of data pipelines. And as you can see here, this is like a different, <clears throat> a different type. It's a workflow, or, which means a data pipeline. Uh, and it has a different set of plugins. So in this case, our data infrastructure has built different kinds of plugins that you can use to you know, manage your data pipelines. But, uh, and they, but they are consistently, you know, some things are consistent still. So if I'm used to doing like, you know, managing a backend service or a website, uh, it's easier for me to switch over to the, doing data engineering because like the tools are you know, in some one place and you, they are also familiar enough. So in this case, data lineage or like dependencies is an important part of troubleshooting your pipelines. So there's a, you know, a plugin that does that. Oh. So that is pretty much it for the demo. This is like the same model all over, uh, different teams building different parts of the, of the backstage, uh, like backstage experience. And we are hoping that coming back to like the goal of the open source project, we're hoping that in a similar way that we have enabled this inside Spotify, we're hoping that for all the different software, like open source projects out there, if there's a Jenkins, you know, if people are using Jenkins, there's a Jen Jenkins plugin for that. If people are using Grafana, there's a Grafana plugin for that. If it, people are using, you know, uh, Circle CI, there's a plugin for that. And that hopefully we can create sort of a consistent experience where uh, regardless of what infrastructure you, you use in your company, you can, like, you can either build your own plugins or more importantly, maybe get open sourced plugins provided by the community. And then you, you deploy Backstage internally in your environment and just pick the, the open source, uh, you know, plugins that matches your infrastructure stack and you put them together and then hopefully you get a 
better experience for your customers than you had before. That is our, our hope. And so far we have gotten off to a very good start, I would say. There's a lot of interest, like as indicated by all of you here now listening to this, uh, but we also got them, lots of people, you know, helping out, contributing, starting to build plugins, you know, building out, uh, you know, the core parts of the project. So we're pretty, pretty happy about that. Okay. Um, with that, I think we're going to jump over to field some, some questions from you. And thank you all for sending your questions. Um, again, if you have any questions, please chat them to me, Alexandra Way, um, and I'll shoot them over to Stefan so he's got a little bit of order there. Um, and Stefan, if you look at your chat, you'll see some of the questions uh, coming in. Okay. Do you expect to eventually replace the backstage deployment at Spotify with the OSS version extended with our internal plugins? And if so, what kind of timeline do you think that you will have roughly? Yeah, so definitely, like we are, um, we are, uh, we are doing that merge right now. Okay, so uh, within, I think we're hoping to have within. Like the goal is to have inside this week that backstage internal will use the backstage open source core. And then obviously, we're going to still have a lot of plugins that are you know only make sense for Spotify internal. And they they will stay open, you know closed source and private and will only be available you know configured in our internal deployment uh, and now we've also started with the process of like releasing the things that are generic enough and that are based on you know standard open source we're going to release as open source as well like as open source plugins and you saw some examples of that maybe if you look in the repo like we have using lighthouse for example internally now we have an open source version of that. Uh, so we're hoping that all, all maybe all, all those 120 plugins that we have today, maybe a third or something like that of those uh, could be open sourced. Um, next question is for migrations like Python 2 to Python 3, how is the data tracked? Yeah, so um, we are actually doing, uh, we're, we're parsing source code uh in the repositories so all the different software components as i showed before are tracked in backstage uh, and there's a link from you can see here for example there's a link here to ghe or github enterprise uh, where this data is stored so we have another like process that goes through all the different you know repositories with all the different source uh, or these different software components and then looks for patterns. So Python 2, Python 3, you know, there are, I'm not familiar exactly, um, you know, with, with how they do that, but it's essentially like a, you're looking at repository and certain, looking for certain files uh, or, or existing existence of certain files. Uh, and then we sort of take all that aggregated data and we present it with an ownership focused slicing you know, to the teams that are owning that component. Um, next question, are the plugins a best effort from each team or is there an initiative to contribute to the back end? I'm not sure exactly how what that means. I'll, like every team, I, I, I try to answer it. Maybe, sorry if I'm, if I'm not answering exactly what you're asking for. But so every team are owning their plugin. So there's no central team that is sort of overseeing or, or forcing them to do anything specific. Uh, our job as sort of the platform team is to make it super simple for people to build these plugins and to maintain them. So what we do is that we, some examples of that is that we make it super simple to just create a new one by just a CLI command, scaffold a new plugin, you get everything you need um, and you're up and running quickly. Uh, we also build like reusable UI components. Again, looking at this card here, for example, you don't have to build that yourself. You only have to supply the data. That's another way of us like reducing the cost of ownership or the cost of building that. Typically, a, we usually kid like inside Spotify that like a typical contributor to Backstage is an infrastructure, typically like a hardcore backend engineer that's in the infrastructure team. And they are typically not you know well versed in web front-end development so anything we can do to you know 
make it easy for them to build a plugin as well for their API. That's what we try to do. Okay. How do you educate the teams to follow the best practices as displayed in the dashboard? And how do you avoid getting ignored? So we have a process internally at Spotify where the, that when you submit like the pull request for your, for your plugin the first time, uh, we try to like, you know, do a review of it and look at you know, UX patterns and are you following the code conventions and stuff like that. Uh, but as soon as you have merged that, we use uh, a feature in GitHub called Code Owners, where you can basically give ownership of different parts of the repository to different teams. Um, so they can merge and uh, approve and merge their own changes after that. Um, and uh, that has like, you know, there's a, of course, we don't, like there's a balancing act between like, you know, allowing teams to move fast and, and them creating a consistent experience. And we think it's super important that they build their plugin into Backstage and that they have a super smooth experience doing so. Uh, because if they don't have that and we are sort of blocking them or in their way, they will eventually build, you know, their own system outside of Backstage. And that breaks the whole strategy of trying to centralize all the tools and documentation into one place. So I think we err a little bit on the side of allowing teams to do what they want and then hoping or sort of, you know, nudging them when they're not following best practices. How does shipping a new version of a service work? Is that done through Backstage? Yes. Uh, or a new version of your service. Uh, I, I'm guessing that's like a new API you know, a new version of your API. That is actually not controlled over Backstage. Uh, you would probably do that directly through the code and then Backstage would reflect those changes. So Backstage would be more like a read-only, you know, you know, showing you the new version API that you're exposing. Um, so we try to think about like three main touch points for developers, if you will. So first they have their code editor where they write the code. Everyone can choose whatever they want. Uh, then we have GitHub Enterprise where pretty much everyone or all projects are stored unless they're open source and they're Git or public GitHub. And then we're hoping that people are working, you know, from jumping between their code editor and GitHub as much as possible without anything else. Um, but for everything else, if they want to troubleshoot, create new software, read documentation, that is all done through Backstage. So that's how we think about, you know, three different, you know, touch points. And what role does monitoring have within Backstage and how do you define the line between Backstage and say a Grafana dashboard? Yeah, great question. Uh, so if you go back to the, um, so for example, if I go to a, a backend service, uh, and I look at, let's say, this newspaper service that I used before. Uh, so there's a team that is owning, uh, no, that clicked something wrong, sorry. Um, so we use the Grafana as well internally at Spotify. So what I get here is like a plugin that wraps like the, a very like limited version of Grafana, some custom like you know standard dashboards uh, that I'm showed. Uh, so, in the cases if you have Grafana, for example, you also have inside Spotify. We have our own you know specific deployment of Grafana. So if I go here, there's a you know Grafana.spotify.net. So that already like breaks down the the model that I talked about. These three interfaces. But in some cases, you have to be pragmatic. And you know, for this case, we haven't really like, re-implemented all of Grafana inside Backstage because we don't think it's, it's going to be hard to keep up with that. What we do, though, is that we put you know, sort of a lean back experience inside Backstage. So maybe you get you know, some high level information here. And then if you want to go deeper, you can go into sort of the full experience. And that is beneficial for a number of reasons. Like, first of all, you teach people how to use, like that we have Grafana, that we use it. Uh, but you also, Backstage works as sort of a central hub, but you, you always know that you can start in Backstage, regardless if, if you're sent, if you're uh, like, 
even if you need to use a different tool, uh, you can at least find it through Backstage. And there's a clear link on how do I get you know, to Grafana from this service. Hopefully that solves it. Um, I think it's another case, you know, in Spotify runs all of our uh, in software on a Google Cloud Platform. And in some cases we, you know, we don't replicate Google Cloud logging functionality directly yet at least. So um, what we do is that we just link out. So Backstage becomes this glue that ties together all the different things into one interface. And that's also how we started uh, integrating, you know, a team that owns, say, Grafana can choose to say, oh, we're going to have like a lightweight integration first, we're just linking out to it. And then they may decide in the future to build a more, you know, fully featured or fully, um, fully working version in the backstage. Do we know what pages or plugins in Spotify's backstage are most used? Yes. The, uh, okay. uh, the by far most used plugins are documentation. So I showed you this technical documentation um, uh, page. I think now this has become a huge use case inside Spotify. Uh, engineers seems to love sort of this concept of writing technical documentation close to the code, uh, but still making all of Spotify's documentation like globally searchable through Backstage. So uh, this is, I think represents almost 40% of, of all traffic to Backstage is documentation. And the second most I think is like uh, services and looking at your CI builds and dr drilling deeper into that. Can you plug other documentation systems to the tech doc links? Uh, not currently, um, but, uh, and also tech docs, uh, our, um, Tech Talks is not yet open source. Uh, this is like the downside of, you know, having different teams owning different parts of Backstage is that, you know, it's up to them to decide when and if they wanted to open source this. So there's a team at Spotify that owns documentation and they build this plugin and they build all the rendering capabilities and Tech Talks in general. Uh, I do know that they are actually, they're in the process of, of starting to open source it. And uh, this is in itself built on other open source technologies such as MKDocs like, or MakeDocs. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, so what we're probably going to do is we're going to release like tech docs into Backstage as different modules. And then you can pick and integrate your own solution on the sort of the backend side. So if you have another docs-like code approach internally, uh, we are. We will make it possible for you to sort of to plug that in and make it available in Backstage and have this centralized way of rendering and, and consuming documentation. Um, this question is about SSO and access management, particularly the authorization part. Is it supported, and what is the proposed setup? So inside Spotify, uh, we use two different ways to authenticate into Backstage. So we have. Uh, so I'm authenticated when I log in with Google, and that's like our main way of doing authentication. But I, some parts of Backstage also requires me to log into GitHub Enterprise. So for example, creating a new software component, Backstage actually like forwards my GitHub you know, token and actually does something on, my, on the behalf of me. Uh, so th this is obviously how we have it Spotify and everyone you know, has different systems that they need to authenticate to. So we are currently working on like a more pluggable auth infrastructure or architecture. We're probably going to use an open source project like Passport JS or something like that, uh, where you know auth is already something that has solved in the open source and, and we're hoping to you know provide a you know, existing solution that is pluggable so that you can you know pick what authentication mechanism you have in your, in, in your environments. How do you deal with rot? And are there lots of abandoned services, endpoints, infrastructure, given that it's so easy to create new stuff yeah. or components? Uh, the process seems to have very little friction, but also scary to him as an infra engineer. Yeah, 
So uh, that's definitely the case. Um, there's like, you know, trade-offs here. Um, uh, so by making it super simple to create new components, uh, you know, people create more components. That's just the, how things work. Um, but there's, that's how we work with uh, Backstage. So the other part of it is that if we would just make it possible to create stuff and, and you know, creating that stuff would, would not be visible, sort of the cost of it, uh, that would become a problem. But if I switch back, you know, for one example is that, you know, uh, we use Backstage as well to nudge you and to sort of show, visualize that you have things that you maybe are not used. So for example, if your cloud cost is going up, it might indicate that you're, you know, you have unused resources. And we even had a master thesis student working on a project which we called service garbage collection. Uh, it's a way basically like we, since we have the central, like, you know, software inventory, um, she started looking at like, you know, when was the project changed? Is it taking traffic? You know, what's the CPU utilization for the service, like the virtual machines that the service runs on? And then if, you know, if, the, if it turns out like we're assuming that those services are not used anymore, we present the banner in Backstage saying like, hey, we found, you know, two services that are probably unused. Click here to like to uh, remove them and to clean them up. And if, you, if this list grows too long, like just saying that you have 29 services, uh, that will trigger most people to, you know, they want to clean house and want to not maintain stuff that's not used. So just visualizing it helps um, quite a lot. And, and actually we have, we're seeing that that's sort of enough, I would say. I think we have time for just one more question. Um, how do we uh, prevent duplication of plugins? Um, basically making it so that the community can see all the plugins that currently exist and you know, that there's no duplication. Yeah, great question. Uh, what we have done is that we have created a process for like suggesting plugins. So there's like template, an issue template in, in Backstage um, where you can go and you select a, you know, a plugin. I want to suggest a plugin. So if before you start to develop one, uh, we suggest that you create an issue for it and then you mark, you know, write in that issue that like, we are working on this. Um, and what we're planning to do when we get more plugins, we're already, you know, now we have a handful of plugins. Hopefully soon there's gonna be a, a lot more. Uh, what we're going to do is to have some kind of open source gallery where we show existing projects and open source components. And where we provide you with like a, you know, you can browse and look through what, what exists uh, before you start to build them yourself. But that's probably, you know, a month or two down the line. All right. Um, I know we're at time now, so thank you all for joining. Um, this session was recorded, so I will be disseminating it across the um, attendee list. Um, but if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to the Backstage community. Thank you very much, everyone.